<laughs> and welcome to our little cultural show that we're, we're covering here. And I wonder if you can guess what our topic is going to be today. Well, that looks like a classroom. It, that is exactly what it is. So we're going to talk today about Japanese classrooms and school life and how those are kind of different from what you may be used to as in the English-speaking world. Hmm. Uh, things are certainly different there than they are over here. Uh, one thing that is quite different is that you stay in the same classroom all day. Hmm. So you don't shift around from one class to the next. Uh, you're in that room basically all day, uh, every day, which means you're with the same classmates hmm. all day, every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that could get, wow, that could get, uh, you could get very familiar with the people sitting around you then. Absolutely. And that's, that is intentional, is that you have to now live with those people, interact with those people, and figure out how to get along with those people <laughs> <laughs> all year long. Uh, and of course, because the school year is 11 months in Japan. So yeah. 11 months? Yep. You get uh, one month off in the summer, and then a couple weeks off you know, here and there uh, around, especially uh, around uh, winter. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a lot of time with those folks. And that's why you see uh, the whole idea of class 1A, class 1B, class 2A, class 2B. How does that come about? Uh, that's actually splitting out the grades into different um, uh, rooms. So Oh, so it's a section. Exactly. A, a, a B, C, a, B, C, D, the, the, E. Just the different rooms. Exactly. So it's not uh, letter grade. Oh, you, you're, no. <laughs> you're, you're lower uh, on the... Uh, grade scale than I am because you're a, you're a B and I'm an A or not necessarily <laughs> um, although there have been some shows um, Bakato Test the, uh, famously is a, is a series in which uh, the, the classes are all split between I think A and F and the, the class A gets all the, the money and all the stuff <laughs> and class F their, all their stuff is falling apart um, <laughs> not so true in, in typical things yeah, so, and that's it's one of the, the neat things is if you see somebody who's in, say, class 5B, you know, that's grade 5, hmm. and they're in the second uh, of, of, of at least two. Grade 5. Groups. Now, that's different than the 5th grade. No, that is, that, that is essentially 5th grade. That's the 5th grade. That, that is 5th grade. So, do they go to the 12th grade? Yes. So, it's grades 1 through 12, uh, just like over here. So, 12, 12B, 12th mm -hmm. grade. 12th grade, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so you, you have to... Uh, live with everybody there in your uh, uh, in your room. To, um, e even with uh, to the point of eating together, uh, we've all probably seen that in in anime where they all push their the desks together. Uh, and even and especially in elementary school, uh, they'll even bring lunch in. Oh. So they actually have a have a, have a lunch cart that that comes up with hot meals. Right to the classroom. Right to the classroom. Uh, so every I class like has that their convenience. Own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and so um, that'll get wheeled in, and the kids are actually uh, some of the kids are assigned to handing out the, the lunches, and so they'll have a, a soup and things like that. And so you'll see a couple of kids will come up, and they'll they'll put on um, smocks and all that kind of and hair nets and all that stuff, and they'll actually ladle out wow. soup and and that, that the bread seems and all very that. Very responsible. Uh, do they do they clean up afterwards? They do. Uh, in fact, there are no janitors technically at no janitors. Uh, at, at most uh, Japanese uh, schools. Can All you imagine doing that in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an interesting experiment, wouldn't it? <laughs> so the students do all their own cleaning, not just lunch, but mm -hmm. from daily activities. Yep, chalkboards, uh, erasers, sweeping up, all that stuff. It's all done by the kids. Um, they all are expected to, to clean up oh. their their classroom. Uh, and you, you have to get a, you know, assigned to that, and that will rotate around depending on the, the school. So, so everybody gets a chance at the responsibilities of exactly. cleaning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, this is all very intentional. It's to teach kids that you know, we all have work to do, we all have jobs to do, and that's a, something that we all have to be responsible for. Yeah, if, I, if I was in that situation, I probably wouldn't make as much of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ideal, you know. Uh, hopefully you're not giving it to, leaving it to other people. Um, but yeah, so you have the, these lunches that'll, uh, that'll come in. Now obviously you can bring your own lunch if you want to. Um, that was something of a political thing back in the day because of the, the question of um, there was a desire to make sure that all kids had a good, decent meal. Uh, and so they wanted to make sure that you know, some kids would bring their own food, but it wasn't necessarily the best food. So there have been, there's been this um, push back and forth uh, throughout history of deciding, okay, is it the best thing to let kids bring in their own food, or do we have standardized food? Complicated. 
it's <laughs> it's a discussed topic in 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 several societies here absolutely as well uh what about the school layout it seems that ah. I, I i've seen a recurring theme in anime <laughs> with the design of the school yeah uh quite often having a clock and a courtyard mm -hmm. It, it, long hallways. It's very <laughs> standard. Um, so on, on the one hand, it's very convenient as animators to just animate the same thing every single time. Um, and anime has certainly built up a lot of standard kind of cliches of how, how things are and you know the, the school bell and, and so forth. But actually, that is very true. Uh, what happened is during the 50s and 60s, as Japan was modernizing, uh, there was a decision to basically modernize all the schools and build fresh new schools all across Japan. Mm. Uh, so all those you know, lovely big concrete buildings that we see in Japan, those sort of standard two or three story tall buildings, they were all built around the same time, so they all had basically the same layout. Wow. So well, was, what did they do with the old schools? Left them right there. Uh, so you'll see in a lot of anime series, if you've seen Ghost Stories, this is a, a major part of that, that show, where there'll be uh, the, the old wooden school building is often still on the grounds. Uh, and it's kept for, for storage and things like that. Um, it's a popular thing for if you're doing a sleepover at the school, you do it in the old school. Um, and it's a, a great place for haunted house stories. The haunted old school. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so, so the, the, that very standardized thing where you have that courtyard, you have the, the hallways with windows on one side and the school rooms on the other side, that is very much a hallmark of how it's done. Yeah. How, how do most kids get to school? Ah, good question. So Japan is a very safe culture, uh, it's a very safe country. So most kids either walk to school or they will take public transportation. Um, certainly um, some folks will drop their kids off at school, it depends on distance and so forth. But there are so many schools um, spread throughout the country and especially living in, a, especially if you're in Tokyo, where it's just everything's condensed in. It's tight. <laughs> exactly. Um, it just, you know, generally speaking, you're going to have an elementary school and a junior high school and a high school in, you know, reasonable distance from where you live. So it just makes sense to let them walk. Wow. It's very surprising <laughs> to so, us. So do teenagers have their own cars or they don't? Not as often. Um, well, a lot of adults don't have cars, mm. uh, especially again in Tokyo. So a lot of space, the cost, the expense. Exactly. Uh, and if you can walk to everywhere. Right. And public transportation is so good. Uh, it kind of makes sense to, to, to not do that. Uh, and even out in rural areas, again, you know, you'll, you, you'll have somebody with a truck or a car or things like that, but it just doesn't make as much sense to, uh, to, to rely on cars the way we do over here. Um, now obviously, if you're in a very uh, dense urban location and you've got a very young child, you'll walk your kid to school, <laughs> things along those lines. So it's, it's, you know, it's not- Just so they don't wander <laughs> off into the- Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to go to school today, mommy. Crayon <laughs> Shin-chan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah, so you, you see the same thing in, in all those schools. You see the, the shoe locker that we've all seen. Shoe locker. Yeah. That's a, that's a very unique Japanese thing <laughs> I, I've seen in several anime. Mm -hmm. uh, people come in with their shoes and they put them in their, their little cubby and they have yep. their umbrella and then they swap into... School shoes. School shoes. Yeah. Uh, I'd never have thought of doing that here in the U.S. except for maybe gym shoes, mm -hmm. uh, but that's... That, that's for gym, and that's not just for the entire day. No, absolutely. When you go into your uh, 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 into your school building, you have a locker f just for your shoes, and you s uh, change out into the, your school shoes, and then uh, head on in, in, into school. So you have your you, know, you don't get all that that dirt and mud from uh, from outside into the school building. Bringing it full circle, it makes it easier to keep clean. Exactly. Yes, uh, and it's also a convenient place for someone to. Drop a little letter in your... Ah, letter. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and then that gets into, um, you know, with, with the, the schools, also the school uniforms. Um, so most junior high and high schools, I, pretty much all of them in Japan have school uniforms. Uh, this evolved over the course of uh, many decades as a, a, a very standard thing. Most elementary schools do not. Um, partly because kids are growing so much. You know. <laughs> I'd have to change it every so often. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but um, even with that, you'll see often elementary school kids uh, with those red backpacks 
you've seen that in anime. That is, again, a very standard thing that you don't have to have it, but generally speaking, any elementary school kid will get that one red backpack. <laughs> that red backpack. Yep. Um, and in, in first grade, they'll get that red backpack, and that they have that for the next, you know, through sixth grade. Um, and so that, that is a big thing, is, um, is what kids have to have with them going into school. Uh, and it, it's an important thing. I mean, that school uniform is expensive. The, the, the shoes are expensive. You know, it's, it costs money. Does, does that help with uh, cliques or uh, uh, yeah. uh, gang-related? Uh, well, that, that's, that, that's what I've seen here in the U.S. Sure. The U.S. has adopted the concept of uniforms, and it's cut down on, on problems with, with gangs. But then, again, that cohesiveness also creates a school unity Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm kind of curious, does, does the person as an individual have less self-expression that way? Or can they be. find other ways of expressing <laughs> themselves? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, I mean, uh, so kind of the ideal of the school uniform is to provide that standard outfit. Uh, and so to reduce, again, you know, uh, gang clothing, gang activities, things like that. Um, in terms of self-expression, again, you find other ways of doing it hair clips, hairstyle, um, how you wear the school uniform. Mm. So the school will have regulations on, for example, how short the skirt can be, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, but you'll have variations in that. You can wear it long, you can wear it shorter. Um, and the, the, you'll have, some schools will have winter uniforms and summer uniforms. Mm. Uh, and they may have sweaters, things along those lines. So you can vary it up and mix that up. And depending on the school, obviously, sometimes there'll be, some will be, will be a little less, um, uh, forgiving of things like undershirts, socks, things like that, and how you change those around. Hmm. Having pride in one school and wearing it outside of mm. school time, I suppose, would be uh, quite a, quite a statement for, <laughs> for a student. Well, to, to an extent, but also, I mean, it's just it's you know, if you go out after school um, to do something, you're not going to go home and change. No. <laughs> um, so a lot of you know, you will see a lot of school uniforms out, uh, you know, in those uh, afternoon and, and evening hours, just because it's simpler. Hmm. Do, do the students have after-school clubs like we do here in the U.S.? Absolutely, and even more so.